right? Uh, so very good afternoon to all of you. I guess uh, online students, uh, very good day to all of you. Are you all there? Yes, good afternoon. Um, okay, fine then. So today you all know that uh, right? today you all know that uh, we are going to have your quiz, right? So online quiz is there. I'm pretty sure that you all are ready with this online students, right? I think uh, you all are okay with that one as well. Um, so it's uh, two thirty, right? Two to two thirty in uh, Sri Lankan time. And uh, before that, we are going to uh, discuss about uh, this particular topic, international trade. So you have been asked to do a small uh, illustration with regard to the assigned topic for 10 minutes, maximum 10 minutes. Right, okay, uh, we'll go one by one, group by group, uh, as per the nature, as per the things mentioned in your LMS. Right, so group number one, Right, group number one. Yes, so let's see. Uh, right, so group number one uh, is their name, uh, team number is also one. Uh, so they are going to discuss about uh, modern trends in international trade. Right, modern trends in international trade. So, who are the members of the group number one? Who are the members of group number one? Only four of you, five of you, only five of you. So you all five are ready, isn't it? Right. So I'll okay. Uh, if you want, you can use this like move as well. Right. Uh, okay. Who uh, are you two? Come and do it. You two. Only two students, isn't it? Only it's fair. Only two students. Uh, needs to come here and record to the present presentation or no? simply illustrate the things. Right, okay, uh, you two could come forward. You and me. Yeah. Right, and speak loud. Uh, you all are there. Don't worry, you can and speak loud. Right, yes, uh, on my students. So we are going to start uh, the today's topic things. Right, uh, so the video is going to be So we can, yes, yes. Right. You can read your name and listen. Right, speak loud to the right, speak loud. Others, uh, please listen now. So this is your next topic. We try to the Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dhoni Kushika. Uh, I'm here to tell about the trends in uh, foreign trade. Uh, Simply international trade is purchase and sale of uh, goods and services with different countries among the, uh, of the world. Uh, there are five trends that uh, can be identified as modern trends. Uh, first one is forced times. Uh, based on the uh, global environment, political environment, cultural and economic environment, uh, we can identify uh, that there is uh, there's a force to dynamism uh, based on that, those factors. Uh, the next one is cooperation among countries. Uh, when entered to the foreign trade, uh, every country has the uh, opportunity to uh, connect with other countries uh, to build up uh, good cooperation. Uh, as an example, there is a, a global economic forum. Uh, their uh, main target is to build up the cooperation among the uh, countries. Uh, uh, yeah, international organization for uh, public and private cooperation. Uh, we think that uh, they are uh, trying to uh, sign new global agreements to facilitate uh, investment, investors uh, and develop, uh, strengthen uh, cyber security. Uh, in their mission statement, uh, they have said that to build up their cooperation. Yes. So I will continue the 
Liberalization of cross border networks. There will be many restriction on cross border movement in the world for resources, services, goods, and capital. It is disturbed to globalization. Now it changed in many countries, reduced restriction, not to take these advantages on international trade. So, fourth one is transfer technology. Transfer technology means the process of distributing the commercial technology by transferring knowledge of the technology. This point is about growth in emerging markets, example India, China, Brazil, and other parts of Asia, South Africa. The impact on international trade increase the potential size worth of international trade, facilitate new generation of innovative companies. Right, fine, okay, thank you very much. I see that. So these are the trends, uh, the modern trends of international trade, and uh, you can ask any questions from there. Uh, if you have these online students, also you can ask any questions. No questions? Thank you. Uh, please, I'm requesting you to speak loud. Uh, speak loud. Uh, first, tell your name. Be relaxed. Just emphasize who you are, just your name. Right? Then uh, discuss the things related with you. Right, okay, so now uh, we are going to discuss about uh, theories related with the international trade. So it's group number two. Who are the members? Only two? Number. Right, okay, you do. Both of you come forward. Right, both of you come forward. Speak out. Speak out. Speak out. Speak out. Yes, first name your name. I'm Jennifer. Mm -hmm. I'm Jennifer. Uh, we are here to talk about the DISP of uh, industrial trade. Speak out. Speak out. The theory, uh, there are uh, four theories in industrial trade. Uh, first theory is absolute and theory of absolute advantage. Uh, this was uh, founded by Adam Smith uh, uh, in his uh, Wealth of Nations book. Uh, according to this theory, uh, countries should specialize in uh, producing goods and services in which uh, they have an absolute advantage, uh, which means that uh, they can produce the goods or services more efficiently than any other country. Uh, this leads to uh, increased productivity and lower cost, which can lead to greater overall economic growth. Uh, the uh, second theory is theory of comparative advantage. Uh, this is founded by uh, David Ricardo. Uh, this, was, uh, this suggests that countries should uh, specialize in produce, producing goods and services in which they have a comparative advantage which means uh, that they have a lower opportunity cost of producing the goods or services that goods or services compared to other countries. This still recognized that even if one country can produce all goods more efficiently, it is still beneficial for countries to trade with each other to uh, achieve a higher overall economic efficiency. And so, uh, I am talking about the story here. Uh, uh, the factor uh, endorsement theory, uh, which was proposed by uh, uh, Maxwell and uh, uh, this theory states uh, that country will specialize in uh, uh, producing goods and goods uh, that uh, utilize their uh, factors of uh, production, uh, such as uh, labor, capital, uh, or uh, natural resources. Uh, uh, the fourth one is a uh, new trade theory uh, uh, suggests uh, that economic, economies of uh, scales and product differentiation uh, can create a uh, comparative advantage for uh, firms in uh, specific industries.
give rise to industries that are concentrated in certain countries. For an example, the success of Silicon Valley in producing high-tech products can be attributed to the collection of businesses, skilled workers, and supporting institutions in the area, creating a network effect that attracts more firms and workers to the region. So overall, understanding these theories can help countries make informed policy decisions that can improve their economic welfare and promote international trade as well. Right. Yes. Those are some of the uh, great theories by linking them into practical scenarios. Right? By linking them into practical scenarios. And meantime, if you have any doubts, you can ask, right? If you have any doubts, you can ask from the related parties. Right. Okay. Uh, so now we are moving to the impact of tariff quotas and product status on the international trade. Now, we know that when it comes to the international trade, Yes, we are doing exports and we are doing imports, right? But uh, with the purpose of protecting the domestic suppliers, both domestic producers as well as the domestic consumers, sometimes the government can implement some policies regarding the international trade. We call it as protection policies or protect museums. Right? So we need to, yes, we are exporting, we are importing, and our domestic the consumers, they are using those imported products, but there are to be certain issues. Right? So, with the purpose of that, government implementing certain policies. So, now we are going to learn about that. Like sometimes they can use, uh, they, sometimes they can introduce a particular tariff, we call it as import duties. Right? So, we want to demotivate the particular importation according we are implementing a tariff. Right. Sometimes we are checking whether the product is good or not before we are importing. Right. Sometimes we may have a quota. We say yes. Now we need 100% from this particular good for our consumption. Domestically we could provide 60%. Then the remaining 40% will be imported from foreign country. So we call it as Cynthia quota. So now we are going to learn about those things in a very detailed manner uh, from group number Four. So, who are the members of group number four? Prices 
and the consumer, consumers reach their purchases and government gain the revenue from it. So the other one is quotas and the protection uh, standards and uh, the other things. Good afternoon, my name is also Tilingan. So I'm going to discuss about the quotas. So quotas have the same quarterly effective uh, effect uh, as tariff. So import quotas are actually uh, tariff barriers uh, that are put in place to uh, limit the number of products that can be imported uh, over a set of period of time. So for an example, you can get uh, like in textile industry uh, when we are like uh, producing an output uh, when we are uh, like importing. Uh, there are quotas that there is a limit to uh, import their clothes and uh, that, uh, those needles and all those stuff, like, you know, buttons and all. <coughs> so that is a uh, basic good example in Sri Lanka for this uh, quota. Uh, nowadays for textile companies, uh, for a uh, like specific period of time, that quotas have been cancelled. Now uh, with the uh, with, uh, changes in government, these quotas have been now uh, imposed uh, again. So that is a basic advantage for the uh, companies as well. So there is a, another concept uh, under quota that is dumping. Dumping is like when we are importing something from foreign country, if we are importing uh, like uh, by uh, spending uh, less price, uh, we can give that product in the uh, domestic market for less price. For in that case, uh, the, the, the production of that means domestic output uh, uh, will be affected, that means influenced by that. So that is basically dumping. Uh, by imposing quotas, that dumping uh, thing also can be uh, prevented. And uh, sometimes uh, like importing of product from other countries, uh, like harmful products, has been uh, prohibited as well. Uh, that is coming under quotas. So basically, that is all about quotas and uh, other thing is product standards. Sometimes, when they are importing some product from uh, other countries, uh, like uh, there are some harmful products uh, which will be uh, not good for health and all. So in that case, uh, we are like importing regulations and import controls, uh, uh, like. Uh, not to uh, import uh, like less uh, quality uh, product from other countries. So uh, the final thing is free trade. Free trade is all about like uh, the agreement of mutual understanding between uh, two countries uh, to uh, import uh, goods without a restriction. Like uh, import uh, like uh, like uh, that means protectionism is uh, still there. Like uh, tariffs and the quotas is still there. But uh, that is known as like uh, free trade because without a restriction we can import and export uh, any good, uh, any good, and that is also known as lazy fair trade as well because uh, uh, like government doesn't have any promotional tools or does not need any promotional tools to uh, promote the uh, like free trade uh, in the country. So yes, thank you. Right, okay, I see that. Good. Right, so India, uh, they discussed that something called uh, free trade. Right? Now, when it comes to free trade, what happens is you may have restrictions, but the I mean the tightness of those restrictions are minimal. Right? So free trade does not mean that you don't have any restrictions, you have restrictions. So that's why actually you enter into agreements. As you may as a two countries, you may have certain issues. Accordingly, you enter into an agreement with the purpose of minimizing those restrictions. So that's what creates the uh, free trade. That's clear? Right. Good. So then group number five. Group number five is? Others are online. Others? Ah, the members are online. Right, okay. Uh, yes, who are the members? Yes, online students could be so well as well. Yes. Great, so nice to see you. Right, okay. Uh, so, Sri Lankan trade agreements. Uh, who is the other one? Yeah. Can we give the task to those two online students? Is that okay? Yes, sir. They are the other students. Three students. Four students from online. Four students from online. Uh, are they are? They are. Donal. 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 Then Ahmed. Then who is the other one? Is it there? Okay, fine. So is that okay if we give the chance to these online students? But I feel like uh, you are very disappointed. <laughs> so they want to speak with the online students, right? Amal, Tonal, yeah. Fine, Tonal, you can uh, start. You too, yes. Tonal, Tonal, and uh, Amal, listen, listen, yeah. Uh, sir, we have a presentation. Shall we share the screen?
Hope you can see the screen, sir. Hello. Yes, uh, yes it's visible. Yes, we ah, can okay. see the screen. Okay. Uh, our topic, uh, I'm Gayan, and our topic is. Uh, yeah, just a moment. Yeah, Gayan, just a moment. Yes. Just a moment. Right. Uh, can you all see this, Daya? Can you see the presentation? I mean, the word document that has been shared. Say it not, right? This is the presentation, right? This is what, right? Yes, sir, Daya, can you see this? Uh, yes, sir, I can see. Right, okay, uh, you can start. Okay, uh, our topic is Sri Lanka trade agreements and uh, Trade agreements is set out the roles for the buying and selling goods for the and service between two or more countries. And Sri Lanka is a member of two bilateral and four multilateral agreements. Uh, bilateral agreements mainly it's with the Sri Lanka and India. One is one major agreement is Sri Lanka into Sri Lanka free trade agreement that is and also uh, between Pakistan and Sri Lanka free trade agreement and uh, when it's come to the multilateral agreement, we have uh, agreement on uh, South Asia free trade area and the agreement on global systems of trade preferences and South Asia Association of Regional Cooperation and Asia Pacific uh, trade agreements. And I will uh, trans. Then uh, Nafli will uh, go through the second part of this uh, trade agreements part. Yeah, thank you, Gayan. And uh, based on the <clears throat> main purpose of making agreement between the two countries is to uh, negotiate the terms and conditions when they are doing the trade with the two countries. So as Gayan said, uh, there are some countries mainly like India, Pakistan, Singapore, and some other countries are dealing with trade agreements. So if we see uh, between India and Pakistan, uh, it's mainly cover the goods in transit uh, points. And if we take Singapore with Sri Lanka, the agreement that covers the investment and goods and services with also the government purchases like uh, government uh, main purchases and telecommunications and also mainly deals with the uh, e-platform transaction like e-purchase, e-commerce like that. And when it's come to GSP, as everyone knows, it's mainly deals with uh, United States. So to entitle, we need to fill out some uh, certain requirements for that, like uh, the apparel industry. So it's mainly depend with the US export and also uh, mainly GSP plus it's 2017 uh, with the European Union. We have signed and we got some privileges with Sri Lanka in the export. So that's mainly help us with the trade agreement in the export industry. And uh, I think this is our Presentation based on the trade agreement. Yes, uh, thank you very much. And it's nicely done. Now, uh, yes, now, where are you from, Buddha? Buddha, Daya, where are you from? Scotland. Yeah, from Scotland. Yes, then. Uh, ah, you are from all Yes, Ahmad, you are from all Now, uh, yes, uh, in yeah. Scotland, yes, in Scotland, the Buddha, which kind of a trade agreements that they have entered into? Do you have any idea regarding that one? Uh, 
Scott, I think it's uh, it's it's Scotland is under UK, and I'm not sure yes. what are the uh, for the UK Sri Lanka. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. Yes, guys, we can hear you properly. Yes, as as uh, uh, my idea, sir, in when you when it comes to UK, uh, if you look at the like, uh, if you in a normal case, if you go to the sh sh uh, shopping center or any other places, I I didn't see any much product imported from the Sri Lanka. When it comes to the Europe Union, we have some apparel exported export to the Europe Union, other countries like. Uh, uh, not sure exactly, uh, but when it's come to the UK, I didn't see any much because if you go to the shop, there are many product import from the India, Bangladesh, many apparel from the Bangladesh, but uh, uh, for the Sri Lankan product, I, we, we have seen very less product and if you comes to the service sector in UK, so a lot of services are uh, outsourced to India. A lot of uh, mainly now with this uh, major companies are because with this high labor cost, they are trying to cut down their labor and outsource these services to the India because they have major agreement. Uh, I think they have major agreement with the India. They are doing the to under very low cost. Therefore, they are uh, uh, encouraged to uh, that to. Uh, also the services to like uh, low cheaper low cheap labor countries therefore with the when it's come to uk i didn't see any much labor agreement entered with the sri lanka okay so good thank you now what do you think uh, what are the what could be the major uh, issues for that kind of a less participation uh, from our in sri lanka i think sir major it's from the uh, Government intervention, we have, I think, because uh, if you look at the every part, the in, in UK side, the lot of Indian involvement involvement are here. Like if it's come to the uh, service sector or or any other uh, sectors also, lot of uh, Indian uh, involvement are here. But when it's come to the Sri Lankan side, it's just very minimal. I think this government intervention is very much less and uh, the government support to other uh, entrepreneurs is also very much less to back for their businesses in here. I think that is the major reason. Yes. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. Now, here you could see that uh, based on the Diane's explanations, if you look at your election material, they are specifically mentioned that the trends in the foreign trade. Now at the end, I have mentioned that the developing of some other countries like India. So that's what actually so that has illustrated. Yes. Uh, yes. Actually, no, the yes. Are applying, uh, to, to, uh, yes. The other one yes. 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 Small uh, concern from uh, uh, participants as well. Could you please ask them that issue as well? Yes, sir, I can ask. Your same group member asking the question. Yes. From 90, we are supplying material for 90. 95. In 90 is also a Europe product, right? Europe brand. It was not clear. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, but could you please uh, speak now? Very good, yeah, very good. Yeah, you can come here. So they ask you to make lots of food. Yeah, you can ask. Yeah. In the apparel industry, we are, we are supplying materials for nice brand of, from brand mix. Then, what is your concern? Uh, yes, that is for the, I think that is covering for the Europe Union, but after this Brexit, uh, that bit, that UK has uh, moved out from this Europe Union, therefore they, I think they are not part of that Europe Union, and with that uh, agreement has not applicable to UK, if there is any such agreement or any exports. Yes, you can ask but Yeah, you can tell me first. Oh, okay. Well, the answer is uh, satisfied. Thank you very much, Kayan. Yes, 
Muhammad okay. dah guna how about the uh, Maldives? Any agreements? Yeah, I'm from Maldives. Uh, yes, so right. far, <clears throat> as per my knowledge, I think uh, Maldives and India went up with an agreement uh, to supply essential items such like as uh, flour and sugar. Those items, they got, both the government has made a mutual, mutual understanding and supplying. I mean, from India to Maldives, as uh, may you know, Maldives, uh, it's fully dependent for import, fully import dependent country. So there is no such production is have. So all the items they have to import and supply to the people. So for that purpose, uh, India and Maldives have made an agreement to supply the uh, essential items such as flour and sugar at a lower cost, which is uh, beneficial for the people. Like uh, in Maldives, in any way, you can buy one kilogram of sugar and flour in equivalent to Sri Lankan rupees, like uh, like hundred rupees. I think for the last past four to five years, that's the price for the flour and sugar because that's they treat as an essential item. So because of that agreement is more people's are beneficial uh, to maintain their at least a uh, basic lifestyle of their, which is more essential to our country. I think right now we are facing, right? So based on the trade agreement, they are getting that much of benefit from uh, uh, other countries. Right, very good, very good. Now, what do you think about the Sri Lanka participations to into the supply chain to these small deals, especially in the hotel sector. Yeah, I think uh, Sri Lanka also uh, have a significant influence over the Maldives import because from Sri Lanka, I think uh, tea and some of the other essentials like such as uh, uh, vegetables also importing, I mean, in uh, air freight. So Maldives mainly depend on the vegetable fruits from Sri Lanka. They are exporting to Maldives and also some Sri Lankan products as uh, there are a lot of Sri Lankans living here. So for their needs, Sri Lankan products, they are importing to Maldives. So from that, I think Maldives is also contributing certain percentage to the Sri Lankan export from that perspective. Right. Yes. Thank you very much, Dayan and Ahmed, for the valuable uh, contribution given to this particular discussion. Right. So thank you very much. See you all. Right. So keep there. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So group number seven. So they are going to talk about now the previous group they discuss about the Sri Lankan uh, trade agreements. Now we are going to discuss about some of the issues of these agreements and what type of a recommendation that group that we could bring into this particular discussion. Now team number seven. So are the members of team number seven? Only four of you. Five of you. Two are you and me. You can come forward, so now we are going to talk about the issues and the recommendations. Right, okay. So good afternoon, you all. Uh, we are group number seven, I am Ali. Uh, today we are going to uh, discuss. Sri Lankan uh, trade agreement uh, issues and uh, recommendations. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, South Asian uh, free trade uh, area and uh, SAFTA. Uh, and uh, SAFTA is a uh, uh, 2004 agreement uh, that uh, created a free trade area of uh, 1.6 billion people uh, in the Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, uh, India, Maldives, Nepal, uh, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka. Uh, with the version of uh, increasing uh, economic uh, uh, cooperation and the uh, integration, uh, this year uh, we can uh, see the non tariff uh, barriers. And uh, one of the uh, main challenge of uh, SAFTA is the uh, ex existence of uh, non traffic barriers uh, such as uh, difference in uh, regulatory stance and uh, technical barriers to trade. Uh, these uh, barriers can be uh, limited the uh, ability of uh, Sri Lanka business and export the uh, other country uh, in the region. Uh, to address this issue, Sri Lanka could work uh, with other members uh, countries 
to improve uh, regulatory homogeneous no, uh, sorry uh, harmonization uh, and uh, reduce uh, non tariff uh, barriers uh, this could uh, involve to uh, measures such as uh, uh, sharing best uh, practices uh, developing common standards and uh, regulations uh, and uh, improving uh, communication and the uh, coordination among the uh, regulatory uh, authorities uh, and uh, trade uh, uh, imbalance. Uh, other challenges of the SAFTA is the, uh, is the uh, trade imbalance between Sri Lanka and the other members of uh, countries. Uh, Sri Lanka uh, tends to uh, have the trade uh, defeats uh, with the most SAFTA members countries. Uh, which means uh, that it is imports more uh, import imports more than the uh, export. Uh, the, uh, to address these issues, Sri Lanka could work uh, from uh, gather export uh, uh, diversification uh, and uh, competitiveness. Uh, this could uh, involve uh, measures such uh, as uh, improving access to finance technology uh, assistance uh, for small and medium sized uh, enter. Prices SMEs, uh, promoting the uh, innovation and technology adoptions and the uh, investing in the uh, inter, uh, infrastructure of uh, logistics to uh, facility trades. So, uh, I will like to uh, uh, pass on. environmental standards. Finally, there may be uh, concerns about the potential impact of the Sri Lanka-China TA on labor and environmental standards in Sri Lanka. Some critics uh, have raised uh, concerns that increased trade and uh, investment flows could uh, lead to uh, ex uh, exploitation of uh, workers and uh, damage to environment. To address this issue, Sri Lanka could work to ensure that the uh, Sri Lanka-China FTA uh, includes uh, functions for labor and uh, environmental protection. This could uh, involve measures such as requiring uh, companies to uh, adhere to uh, international labor and environmental standards, establishing monitoring and uh, enforcement uh, mechanisms, and providing support to uh, support for capacity building and trading programs. Uh, if one uh, agriculture and service sectors, uh, there may be concern in Sri Lanka about the potential impact of Sri Lanka India PTCA uh, on uh, countries' agriculture and service sectors. Some uh, critics have raised concerns that uh, increased trade and investment flows. Uh, could lead to a uh, flood uh, of cheap Indian imports and uh, displacement of uh, local business. To address this issue, Sri Lanka could uh, negotiate uh, uh, with India include uh, provisions in agreements that uh, protect sensitive sector uh, such as agriculture and service. This could uh, involve measures uh, such as uh, uh, tariff rate costs and a safeguard mechanism to limit imports of certain products as well as uh, support for local business to help them uh, compete with Indian firms. Right, okay, thank you very much. I will end. Right, okay, uh, so now we are going to discuss about the eighth topic. That is uh, export oriented growth strategy and import substitution. Right? Export oriented growth strategy and import substitution. Now, take name number eight. Only two. Right. Uh, Speak loud, huh? Speak loud. I'm going to talk to you about the uh, export growth strategy and uh, potentially taking you through the import substitutions. So, uh, export uh, growth strategies. Uh, 
uh, a type of an economy where it opens up to the international trade and uh, uh, Sri Lanka has been working on various uh, strategies to uh, diversify its exports and increase its uh, market and uh, the country uh, does not uh, grow only with only by its uh, expansion of uh, growth, uh, expansion of layback capital, but also it's uh, just to expand its export growth and strategy. So, uh, different export growth strategies are the uh, diversification of exports, uh, infrastructure development, uh, attracting foreign investments, innovation and research, and uh, giving rise to uh, trade agreements. So, please thank you. The opposite of uh, exports of export um, growth strategies, uh, import substitution. So by export uh, growth strategies, what we are trying to do is we are going to export the stuff that we produce at our best. So we might be having uh, either competitive advantage or absolute advantage in some products, and we are going to export those products and earn an income. And based on that, we are going to import whatever the stuff we are not good at producing. So that creates an efficiency in the economy whereby we export the most efficient stuff. But under import substitution, whether we are efficient or not, we are going to produce the stuff, the goods that we need for our domestic consumption within the country itself. So it's the complete opposite of the export growth strategy. So uh, yeah, that's all about uh, import substitution. Thank you. Any examples? <laughs> Uh, yeah, export growth strategy and export growth strategy. Uh, so export growth strategy, one good example is our garment industry. So we are very good at producing garments, but uh, countries like uh, USA might not be very good at producing garments. So we produce our garments, export it to USA, and we import wheat flour from that country. So, uh, mm -hmm. It's an export growth strategy. And the import substitution, very recent, one of the very recent examples, tires. So uh, the, the Canadian tire company was acquired by Seat. And we produce good tires in Sri Lanka. And recently, Seat is uh, not good at uh, passenger vehicles. So we don't put Seat tires into our cars and uh, our vans and stuff, but it's good at lorries and heavy duty vehicles. Recently, we opened another company called Ferrantino tires. And we, we can put those tires into our cars and vans. That's an uh, import substitution. How about the cost of that particular Ferrantino? Yeah, yes. the, the cost much might be higher producing it, but yet uh, if we import a continental tire or uh, Michelin tires, still it's very much more costly than Tarantino tires and it's not good, good for our environment. We have a lot of products and stuff, we need a heavy duty tire for the cars and vans also. Okay, great. Right, so another most important topic, known of the government. In international trade. So, group number nine. How many members? Only one. Okay, so the other member is in the way, it's nearby. Okay, so we'll wait for that uh, topic then. So, then we'll move to our topic number 11. That is uh, FDI, it's very much important for the foreign direct investments and its proxy years. Right, so that will be done by group number 11. Group number 11. Yeah, uh, first two. First two. Right, so it's foreign direct investments to Sri Lanka and its proxy years. Good afternoon everyone, so I am Aravindar. So our topic will be foreign direct investment to Sri Lanka and its procedures BOI. So mainly uh, the board of investment BOI is the primary agency which is responsible for promoting and facilitating the foreign direct investments in Sri Lanka. Uh, the applicable law which is governed the uh, DI will be the BOI law number 4 of 1978 and its amendments. And the BOI is uh, providing uh, such a following services such as legal services and advice on matters arising from all aspects of BOI operations, providing legal inputs and support such as 
negotiating, drafting, reviewing, and relevant uh, and joint ventures. Memorandum of understanding and relevant other documentation, lacing the external line agencies, authorities, legal councils, foreign arbitral tribunals, foreign legal councils, attorney general departments, and finally managing all legal proceedings with, uh, regarding to the foreign direct investments. And other than that, the VOI Act, some other regulate, regulations and acts are also involved in the FDI procedures, uh, such as Companies Act number 7 of 2007, which govern the companies, and the Exchange Control Act number 4 of 1953 and its regulations, Strategies Development Project Act number 14 of 2008 and its amendments, and finally, the Finance Act number 12 of uh, 2012. Part 5 and its amendments. And uh, uh, next will be our the procedures uh, to register as an investor will be discussed by your students. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to explain uh, which are the procedures for the foreign investment. The following procedures, uh, procedures are the procedures for uh, foreign direct investment through the BOI in Sri Lanka. First one is the submitting the application. As per uh, the following, uh, first step in the uh, FDI uh, foreign project investment process is to submit an application to BOI, where the BOI provides application from the that needs to be filled out the applicant. Uh, following are including the application, mainly uh, nature of the uh, business, uh, uh, cost, cost, uh, cost, uh, cost, uh, location, and number of employees and uh, some details including. Second one is the uh, screening and approvals. Uh, the BOI will evaluate the application whether it uh, meets the investment criteria and uh, will issue the letter of approval. Uh, third one is the registration of company. The investor must uh, register the company with the registrar of the uh, uh, company in Sri Lanka. Fourth one is the obtain, uh, company should obtain the necessary permanent approvals. Uh, the investor must obtain the necessary permanent and approval from the Iran other authorities uh, such as IRD, uh, Custom, Sri Lanka Customs, and Diva uh, Customs, uh, also CV, uh, Treasure Bank of Sri Lanka. Other one is the opening the bank account. The investor must open the bank account in Sri Lanka and remit the uh, approval investment uh, amounts to uh, the, that account. Uh, other one is the commence, commencing operator. Uh, all, the, all the above criteria fulfill the mission uh, company. Uh, the investor can start the operation in the Sri Lanka. Uh, in addition, BOI uh, provides several in incentives to the foreign investment uh, to promote their investment. As for example, BOI uh, uh, provides uh, some, uh, some tax holiday periods, uh, some duty-free importance of capital goods such as uh, uh, taxation of profit capitals. Uh, then, uh, the aim of the BOI is to promote sustainable economic growth and development in Sri Lanka. Uh, currently, uh, uh, India and China is the Sri Lanka main foreign investors. Uh, as for example, uh, uh, in, uh, Sri Lanka, in, in India provides the more infrastructure and service uh, development, area, development uh, examples. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Right, okay. Thank you, Anna. Good. Right, so now uh, we are moving to, I think, uh, virtual teams, VT1, VT6, and VT7. Uh, who is virtual team number one? <coughs> virtual team number one? Hi, sir. Good afternoon. Am I audible to you? Yes, we can hear you properly, Buddha. Uh, so, how many members are there in your group? So, we have uh, five members, but uh, today we are going to uh, present uh, about uh, international uh, payments. Me and uh, Harsha will join. Right, okay. So, now, uh, yes, it's plain uh, payments applicable to international trade. Yes. Yeah, you can uh, uh, switch on your. Yes, you can start. So, we, can start. So we have a presentation. Uh, I can uh, share my screen. Yes, you can, you can share your screen. No worries.
Yes, it's visible for us. Okay, sir. Uh, after you can continue. Good afternoon, all. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, today I am going to speak about uh, international payment modes uh, applicable in international trade. So first, I am going to explain about uh, international trade. International trade mean uh, transaction between uh, two countries. Under this, uh, we can use a few methods uh, for this transaction. First one is a letter of credit, then telegraphic transfer. The other one is a documentary collection, then open account, then cash in advance, and also e-payment methods and uh, digital payments. First, I'm going to explain about uh, letter of credit. What is letter of credit? Letter of credit means a document issued by buyer's bank by guaranteeing the payments to sellers upon presentation of some certain documents. So there are some certain documents seller need to submit to the buyer's bank. So first one is uh, bill of lading. When it comes to sea shipment, the he, uh, seller has to submit this uh, bill of lading. Uh, when it comes to air shipment, he has to submit airway bill. Then uh, consignment notes, that is between uh, border countries, if there is any transaction, they have to submit this consignment notes. Then commercial invoice. Then certificate of origin. The other one is uh, packing list. So there are some certain uh, LC, few types of LC uh, we are using in international transfer payment methods. So first one is DPLC or DA. The second one is irrevocable or revocable. Third one is restricted LC. Then LC with or without recourse, then confirmed LC, then uh, transferable LC, then back to back LC, standby LC, and revolving LC. Okay, then I'm going to move to second payment method, the, that is uh, telegraphic transfer. Telegraphic transfer means a method of electronically transfer funds from one account to another account. Under this uh, TT, uh, there are a few methods uh, we can explain. First one is ACH. This method uh, mainly used in USA. The other one is uh, direct debit. The next one is NEFT. NEFT is uh, mainly used in uh, India. The other one is uh, all we know it is commonly we can use this switch. Then I am going to move to third one, that is a uh, documentary collection. In this method, uh, bank uh, act as an intermediary between uh, buyer and seller to facilitate the payment. This is uh, similar to LC, but uh, this is not much uh, time consuming and not much expensive uh, like LC. The other method is open account. Open account method uh, when a buyer has uh, some certain time period to typically 30 days, 60 days, 90 days to uh, pay after receiving the goods. The other, other methods uh, is uh, cash in advance. In this method, uh, buyer has to pay 100% uh, in advance. Full payment need to be done, then only he received the goods. The next method, uh, e-payment methods or digital payments. That will uh, be explained by my colleague, uh, Janaka. Thank you, everybody. Janaka, over to you. Okay, uh, thank you, Harsha. Uh, Actually, I'm going to explain about the uh, e payment methods and uh, digital payments. Uh, digital payments are very uh, popular in international currently. As my uh, colleague explained, uh, if you want to open an LC uh, without going back, now uh, you can open an LC because you can uh, submit uh, all the documents via online. Or uh, if you want to transfer some fund via uh, SIF transfers, simply you can take your mobile or your laptop. So you can log into your uh, online bank and you can uh, transfer funds. Uh, except to that, uh, you know, in currently uh, the worldwide, uh, we are using the PayPal, uh, credit cards, uh, debit cards, as well as some uh, online uh, payment gateway links, online market platforms. For example, if you want to buy some goods, uh, you can log into Amazon site, you can buy uh, goods from the Amazons and you can pay through uh, PayPal or Visa card. Uh, currently, pay, uh, Amazon is accepting uh, cryptocurrency transactions also. So uh, this is the uh, trend in uh, digital payments nowadays in international trade. 
So uh, I'm going to discuss about uh, some uh, best uh, digital payment gateways in international trade. Uh, the first one is uh, e-wallets. Actually, the, without uh, using a hard cash, you can transfer funds to your supplier or your service provider. So no need to use hard cash. And the second one is the cryptocurrency payments. Actually, the cryptocurrency payments is very popular currently. Uh, you know, uh, in uh, El Salvador, they uh, moved to a Bitcoin transactions because now they are accepting uh, Bitcoins as a payment method, as well as uh, most of the uh, multinational companies like Amazon, Microsoft, they are accepting the cryptocurrency transaction. You know, the Tesla. Tesla products you can buy using the cryptocurrency transactions. Uh, third uh, method I'm going to uh, introduce uh, uh, central bank digital currency. In India, you know very well, the, they introduced uh, their digital rupee, as well as China also introduced their uh, digital currency. So this is uh, effectively we can use in international trade. Uh, fourth one is actually the new concept in, uh, in digital payments. This is embedded finance. This embedded finance means actually you don't want to go to the bank. Without go going to the bank, you can fulfill your fund transfer requirements. For example, you want to buy some product from Amazon. Amazon will decide your requirement. Uh, next one is uh, virtual uh, worlds and the neo banks concept. Uh, neo bank means actually the the bank. This uh, the banks are digital only that operate without uh, physical branches. So the next point, uh, the, the below table, uh, you can see uh, how the payments in 2022 uh, use internationally. The source is the JP Morgan. JP Morgan is an American bank and multinational financial service. So after looking at this table, you can see in internationally, shift transfers, 24% of the transfers, shift transfers. Uh, so other uh, percentages you can uh, go through, I can uh, share with you uh, in the WhatsApp group. Uh, so uh, there are some uh, criticism in uh, international trade fund transfers as well. You know, uh, in the SIF transfers or bank debit card payments, we have to pay uh, some charges. This is an uh, this is an uh, design package in international trade. Further, uh, we have to take some time to transfer funds. Uh, third point is uh, transparency uh, because uh, sender has very little visibility on the same process. Fourth one is uh, maybe errors will happen. Uh, next point is uh, we have to use different currencies and we have to face some exchange losses when transferring funds, it will hit to your financial statements as well. So uh, I'm going to explain the as a final section. Uh, the conclusion of international payments. Actually, this is a very uh, broader and uh, wider concept. Uh, uh, when you see the traditional methods before uh, all the organizations, countries used traditional methods, but nowadays you can see many uh, digital payments methods they are using to make their transactions. As well as uh, currently you can see a lot of uh, cryptocurrency transactions involved in uh, international trade. So uh, mainly I want to highlight actually the international trade payments are very high risky. So we have to uh, manage uh, very carefully these kind of transactions when you're doing with your organizations as well as country-wise. So uh, our conclusion we are going to highlight. So we need to make very uh, transparency voluntary policy to make successful payments in international level. It will help both sender as well as seller to make their transaction very really easiest way. Uh, thank you very much. Right, yes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Janaka and uh, what's your good name? The other one? Uh, Harsha. Janaka and Harsha for the informative presentation uh, that both of you have done. So thank you very much. Again, it was very informative. Right? So I think uh, you all uh, got some very good understanding about the prevailing situation on these particular uh, international payments, right? So thank you very much, Tanaka and Harsha. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you fine. Much. Good.
Right, so now again we are moving to the virtual team number six. Uh, it's legal background of international trade. Or legal background for international trade. So representing uh, virtual team number six, I am there. Virtual team number six. Yes. Team members of virtual team number six. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who is that? What's your name, Buddha? Good name. Uh, I'm Nimesha, sir. Nimesha Vijay Singh. Yes, sir. Is there any other group member? Um, yes, uh, yes, sir. sir. All right. So, uh, all of you are there, or few members? Yes? Um. One person is from uh, physical class also, sir, and others I'm not sure about the online part. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so we'll go with uh, this online platform then. Now, yes, could you please, uh, both of you, could we switch on your cameras, please? Right. Sena uh, and the other one is Vijay Singh. Yes, uh, good afternoon. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, so I think you can see the students as well here. Right, so let's uh, start about discussing uh, this legal background for international trade. Yes, you can start. Uh, so I'll share my screen. Uh... Yeah, uh, the PowerPoint, yeah, fine. Is it visible, sir? Yes, it's visible. Uh, Nimesha, over to you. Uh, you can continue. I'll end up. Okay. So, uh, when it comes to the legal background for international trade, uh, first of all, we can uh, we know that international trade is the law that is set up uh, and the agreements that govern. Uh, the commerce between countries, right? Uh, yeah. Then, um, so in 1995, uh, the World Trade Organization, which is a formal international organization to regulate trade, was in established. The purpose and structure of this organization was to, uh, to, was to govern the agreement establishing the World Trade Organization. Uh, it doesn't specify the actual rules that govern international trade in specific areas. Uh, these are found in separate treaties annexed to this particular agreement. Uh, Janet will continue uh, about a few other points. Over to you, Janet. Thank you. So the scope of the World Trade Organization is uh, basically to provide the framework for the administration and implementation of the agreements. And uh, this is the global body of uh, regulating the international trade. Uh, forum for the further negotiations and uh, provide trade policies and uh, promote uh, and greater coherence of the among members economic policies and so on. So when it comes to the Sri Lankan context, uh, <laughs> Uh, Department of Commerce, uh, Sri Central Bank, Sri Lankan Customs, uh, those are the parties who regulate the uh, legal background of the international trade in Sri Lanka. Uh, mainly this Department of Commerce is responsible for uh, foreign trade policy formulation. Uh, so they are in the coordination and implementation of uh, matters related to international trade. Uh, they, they're having the objective uh, of developing and promoting Sri Lankan private trade uh, uh, in the relation of bilateral and uh, multilateral relevance. 
and uh, other than that sri lankan customs uh, will enforce the revenue and social uh, protection laws and uh, ministry of trade uh, it will uh, formulate the policies in relation to the international trade and other than that bui also uh, getting involved into this scenario uh, thank you very much right okay thank you very much uh, both of you uh, for the presentation right okay so next uh, we are moving we have another two topics uh, the other one is all of the government international trade and uh, we have another virtual team that is uh, challenges in international trade Right, so virtual team number seven, are you there? So we are having um, Fernand, Pali, Zima, Zaru, and uh, Riba Zaru. Yes, are you there? Virtual team number seven, here physically. Ola online platform. Yes, uh, virtual team number seven, any members? From virtual team number seven. Fernand, Pali, Zima Zaruk, and Riva Zaruk. Yes, now we discussed the role of the government. Uh, the other member still not. So anyone from this work could be try to watch up. Just asking whether these friends are there. Right, just a moment. One in there, right? So, are they on coincidence? So, Uh, 
tariff and non-tariff barrier, uh, trade agreements and trade facilities, uh, facilitation, uh, facilitation measures and import levies. And next one is the uh, import uh, regulation. The government regulates imports to protect local industries and ensure that imp uh, imported goods meet certain standards. Example, uh, regulating the quality and safety of imports goods, uh, imposing tariffs and imports quotas. Thank you, Dean. Thank you very much. So again, uh, we'll check this uh, BD virtual team number seven members. Are you there? Virtual team number seven, uh, Furnas, Pali, and uh, two Saruks, Sima Saruk, and the other one is Viva Saruk. Are you there? Right, are you there? It seems that. Uh, they have not joined. Right, anyway, so uh, it was a nice discussion, isn't it? So thank you very much uh, for providing uh, this much of a very informative uh, discussion with regard, to, with regard to this particular topic because I know that you all are busy, that you all are working, and today you have a quiz as well. Right? Today you have a quiz, and you have to study for that quiz and this particular topic, and you have to do a discussion. And again, also, you have to study something. So you have to read the entire international trade topic, some of us are part of the topic, but anyway you have to find out certain certain things, right? So thank you very much and really appreciate uh, your commitment towards this particular, uh, what do you call this particular course unit as well as particular this task, right? So online students again, thank you very much for you all as well. Right, okay, so now uh, it's time is 2.15, so actually uh, it's, yeah, to the time, to the time, to the point. Right, so 2.30 we are going to start our online quiz. Uh, you can have a break. Right, if you hold, and you can just look at the things. Right, you can, you can get yourself prepared to the quiz. You have 15 minutes. <laughs> So please log in to LMS now. We will start the quiz sharp at 2.30. So please log in to LMS and you can just look at the data. It's now I open the phone. Yes, sir. For the students who are joining by online platform, you all need to switch on your camera. Right, students who are joining. This is right. Students who are joining uh, online platform, you all need to switch on your cameras. Right, please do it and better if you have a particular distance between your camera and the uh, people who are there. Right. Anyway, you have to switch on the camera.
Yes, my uh, students are you aware? Online students. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. So, could you please so, uh, switch on your cameras, please? Please switch on your cameras. By all of you. Yes, please switch on your cameras. All of you, right? Please go to your LMS. Right? All of you, please go to your LMS. Right? Please go to LMS, uh, Business Economics, your subject. And uh, under assessments, you can see that I have mentioned the details regarding your uh, what uh, this. Quiz. Right, so I have mentioned the details regarding that quiz. So please wait. Uh, still, the link is not there. Right, so please wait. Right, all of you, you all need to switch on your cameras.
Right, uh, all of you, uh, could you please refresh your LMS page? The same page, please refresh the same page. Right, so I think you can see the quiz. Right, so once you uh, refresh, right, under assessments after the information regarding the quiz, you can see the quiz link. So please click it. Right, please click it. Then you would see the attempt part. Right, online students, is that visible to all of you? Can yes, you all see the quiz? Without? Right, good. Yes. So you will be given. Yes. All of you okay, fine. So you will be given 30 minutes for your quiz. Right, you will be given 30 minutes for your quiz. You can start. Good luck. So don't wait at the end. Once you complete, just submit, submit all and finish. Done.
please don't log out of the system you have to be there in the system online students So you have done you can click finish attend then submit all submit all for grading
once you finish click finish attempt then submit all and finish again submit all and finish then you could see your marks right so don't wait till the end right don't wait till the end Only nine minutes more. Nine minutes more.
Yeah. So you only have five minutes more. Please try to complete uh, before the session ends. Be silent, be silent. Please try to complete before the session ends. Click finish and then, then finish and submit again, finish and submit. You can see the marks. We just decided, we decided. Right, so have you all completed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, okay, just a moment. Right, you have completed. Inshani, 